Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and we're in the book of Exodus today. We're going verse by verse through this book. We come to Exodus chapter 6, verse 1. You can study the entire Bible with me, just like we're going to do today. Genesis through Revelation, four series going through the Bible at the Bible versebyverse.com. All on audio, so all you have to do is choose the series, the book of the Bible, the chapter, the section, click and listen. And all you need to bring to the Bible, versebyverse.com, is the Bible. Check it out today. Nothing better than God's Word, and nothing more important than studying the whole counsel of God. Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go. And with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. Moses feels like a failure because Pharaoh did not let the Hebrews go free. God says, watch what I'm going to do, Moses. Then God says, I'm going to force Pharaoh to set my people free. This really isn't Moses' fight. He thinks it is, but it's not. Like the Bible says, the battle is the Lord's. Two, and God spoke unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord and I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty, but by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Yahweh or Jehovah means the God who finishes what he starts and does what he says. Isn't that a great name for God? Aren't you glad you heard that today? Keep, hang on to this. Remember this. Jehovah, God's name, means the God who finishes what he starts and does what he says. You know, that's pure 100% faithfulness. And God promised the Hebrews that he would set them free. The setbacks that they have experienced, they don't mean that God has changed his mind or that God took on more than what he could handle. God will do what he said he would do because that's the type of God that he is and no one can stop him. That's why I teach the whole counsel of God, all 31,000 plus verses, because it's so reliable. It's truth. It's God. It's God's word. And he always does what he says he will do and he always finishes what he started. That's why we should read the Bible. That's why we should study the whole counsel of God. Four, and I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. In other words, God says the Holy Land is theirs because I promised it to them and neither Egypt nor anyone else can prevent me from keeping my promise to my people. In other words, God is saying, trust me, Moses. I know it doesn't look good right now, but trust me. Five, and I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel whom the Egyptians keep in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. God is eternal and unchangeable, and he keeps his promises. No plan of God can be derailed. But God is not just an unstoppable power. He's also a compassionate God who sympathizes with his people when they are suffering. And that's what's going on here. Six, wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you of their bondage, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. The Israelites are beaten down and discouraged. 
So they need to be reminded that God is going to get them out of that mess, just like he said he would. Seven, and I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God, who bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you in unto the land concerning which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and I will give it you for an heritage. I am the Lord. And Moses spoke so unto the children of Israel, but they hearkened not unto Moses for anguish of spirit and for cruel bondage. The Israelites had been beaten and they had been disappointed for such a long time that the word of God was not sinking in. Not that they didn't believe it in their heart, but it just was not sinking in. Discouraged Christians need the word of God. When you are discouraged and the word of God doesn't seem to penetrate your soul, just keep reading it. Keep reading it. Don't give up on it because it'll bombard that shell until it cracks. It'll eventually sink in. But you can't quit on the word of God simply because it's not sinking in. You got to keep it up. It's powerful. It's the word of God. 10. And the Lord spoke unto Moses saying, go in. Speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, that he let the children of Israel go out of his land. And Moses spoke before the Lord, saying, Behold, the children of Israel have not hearkened unto me. How then shall Pharaoh hear me, who am of uncircumcised lips? Well, he says, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Go in and speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt that he let the children of Israel go out of his land. And this is the same message that Moses brought to the Pharaoh the first time. And so God is giving the king another chance to let his people go free. That's what this is. Tell him the same message. Give him another chance. <clears throat> God is gracious. He don't want to kill Pharaoh's firstborn. He doesn't want to turn Egypt into a basket place with all sorts of judgments. So he says, tell him again. Give him another shot at it. And then again, 12, and Moses spoke before the Lord saying, behold, the children of Israel have not hearkened unto me. How then shall Pharaoh hear me, who am of uncircumcised lips? Moses is hung up on his speech problem. He really is. That's what he means by the uncircumcised lips. I just can't talk. Remember, God, I told you, I stutter. And Moses says, if the Israelites are not going to listen to me, then why in the world would Pharaoh? And I like 13, and the Lord spoke unto Moses and unto Aaron, and gave them a charge unto the children of Israel and unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. God ignored Moses' objection at this time. Just completely ignored it. Didn't even respond to it. God had already said everything that he needed to say about this issue of him stuttering and being slow of speech and all of his inhibitions. He's already said everything he's going to say on it. There's no point in repeating himself. You know, sometimes we have to stop talking about the what ifs and the I can'ts and just step out and obey the word of God. What if? Yeah, but I, can, I know what God says, but what if? I know what God says, but I can't. But just, there comes a point where you say, just obey God. And don't worry about the what ifs. Verses 14 through 25 talk about the name of, or the names of the families of Aaron and Moses. So we're not going to, not going to read all of that, this list of names, but Let's instead go down to verse 26 and pick it up. These are that Aaron and Moses to whom the Lord said, bring out the children of Israel from the land of Egypt according to their armies. So far it has not gone the way that Moses had thought that it would. 
But he's commanded to go to Pharaoh once again and say the same thing. 27, these are they who spoke to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring out the children of Israel from Egypt. These are that Moses and Aaron. They spoke to the king, but they spoke in the name of the Lord. They were sent by God, and because they were sent by God, they spoke the word of God, and they kept it to Scripture, as it were. They kept it to the word of God. You and I as Christians, especially preachers, but all Christians in general, but I'm talking about preachers, Bible teachers, our job is to represent Jesus Christ, the Holy God, the Holy Trinity, and communicate his word. And we should not speculate. We should teach the whole word of God as it is. Don't leave anything out. Don't add anything to it. Don't embellish it. Don't take anything away so that uh, people feel better about themselves. This is, this is God's world. This is God's word. And if you're called to be a Bible teacher or a pastor or a preacher, then stick to the word of God, the whole counsel of God, and don't mess around with it. 28. And it came to pass on the day when, Mo when the Lord spoke unto Moses in the land of Egypt, that the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, I am the Lord, speak thou unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, all that I say unto thee. Moses did not have to be creative, okay? He didn't have to come up with a plan. He didn't have to come up with a device. He did not have to come up with anything. All that Moses had to do was to say what God had told him to say. And if Moses does that, then he has done his job. The results aren't up to Moses. He didn't have to be clever. He didn't have to be cute. He didn't have to be comical. Just thoroughly disgust me when I see pastors doing that sort of thing or preachers. Just nauseates me as they draw attention to themselves and try to embellish the word of God by their own whatever it is that they're putting on display. God help us. Speak the word. That's what Moses did. Speak the word. And let what happens, happen. That's not your business. It's not my business. I wish everybody would respond positively to the word of God. I wish they would. Jesus deserves that, and it would go better for them in this life and in the next. But that's not my business. I can't worry about that. My job is to communicate the word of God as clearly as I can and leave it at that and leave the rest to the Holy Spirit who takes the word of God and burns it in people's hearts and leave the rest to the people who will respond the way they want to respond. That's between them and God. That doesn't have anything to do with me. So that's what Moses was supposed to do. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. Don't embellish it. Don't try to be cute. Just say what I want you to say, Moses. Stick to the word. And if he does, he's done his job. I love that. 30. And Moses said before the Lord, Behold, I am of uncircumcised lips, and how shall Pharaoh hearken unto me? You know what that reminds me of? Back in the, uh, back in the 60s, um, in the 70s, early 70s, but the 60s, when I was a preteen or a teenager, very young, we used to have records, right? The old record players and records. And every now and then, the, the record would get a little scratch on it. So when the needle got to that part of the song, it would skip and it would repeat itself over and over and over again. I remember listening to disc jockeys back in the day, and they would leave the studio for a second or for a minute while the, while the record is playing, and you knew they were out of the studio because it skipped. And the same play, the same thing was said over and over and over again. That's what is known as a broken record. And that's what Moses sounds like. Right here. I, he's a broken record. There's a scratch 
in his vocabulary, and he keeps saying the same thing over and over and over again. Moses said before the Lord, Behold, I'm of uncircumcised lips, and how shall Pharaoh hearken unto me? There he goes again. Well, it's true that Moses is just a humble shepherd and a poor speaker. No question about that. It's also true that Pharaoh was surrounded by educated counselors and eloquent speakers. But Moses is forgetting one thing. How shall Pharaoh hearken unto me, given the fact that I am lacking in so many areas? Well, God is on your side. That's, he's forgetting that he has Almighty God on his side and that he will be speaking the word of God, which makes Moses more important than any of those other guys who Pharaoh has surrounding him. When you speak the word of God, you don't have to be intimidated by anyone. You know, when I first started preaching, I remember it was probably like, oh, I don't know, maybe the third time I was ever preaching in a church. I was invited to go fill in for a pastor for a week. And I got to this, I got to this church, and it was pretty big. And it was filled with highly educated people, you know, doctors and uh, people high in the medical field. I'm highly educated. And here I am, you know, at the time I had a high school education, period. Um, I had been studying the Word of God, reading the Word of God for several years, and I knew God called me to preach. But nervous? Man, I can remember during the song service, looking out over that crowd and just being so nervous. And I've told this story before. I was intimidated by them. Just like I suppose Moses could have been intimidated by Pharaoh and all the highly educated people in his court. And I remember somebody was leading the songs and I'm sitting, you know, on the stage waiting to be called. And it was just as clear as a bell. The Holy Spirit said to me, Mike, you, you are nervous. Yeah, I'm nervous. Why are you nervous? I'll tell you why you're nervous. It's because you care what those people think about you. That's not your job. That's not your business. Don't worry about what they think about you. You're not the issue. I'm the issue. So get up there and proclaim the word of God. And proclaim it clearly. Because it's about me and them, not about you and them. And proclaim that word of God clearly because what you have to say, what I have called you to do this Sunday morning is much more important than any of those people. And you know what? I wasn't nervous. <laughs> and I got up and I preached on hell for 30 minutes to this modern evangelical, highly educated crowd. And when, and when the service was over, I was standing by the door as preachers do. Nobody shook my hand, Not a, except for one lady who was probably close to 80. And she didn't just shake my hand. She grasped both of my hands, and she was almost in tears. She was so happy. Oh, thank you for that message. That's the kind of message we used to, we used to hear in this church way back when we first started it decades ago. Made my day. God blessed her. The rest, the rest were not blessed because they didn't want to hear the word of God. They were listening. They were used to listening to watered down modern evangelical fluff. And I wasn't doing that even back in those early days. I was called to teach the word of God and that's what I did. And I wasn't intimidated. After God showed me what my problem was, and he blessed that one lady, and that blessed me. The important thing is to teach the word of God. The important thing is to proclaim the word of God. That's what, that's what God is trying to get through to Moses. And get this through your thick skull, boy. It's not about you. It's not how they respond to you. This is between me and Pharaoh, me and the Egyptians. So Moses is going to go, and he's going to teach that pure word of God. He's going to proclaim it. 
and God's going to use them. And we'll pick it up next time in chapter 7. If you want to study the whole Bible with me, as I mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast, you can certainly do that. Unwatered down, the pure Word of God, every verse, Genesis through Revelation, using my audio Bible messages. Four series going through the Bible. Click and listen. Study at your pace, at your convenience, at thebibleversebyverse.com. If you believe in getting out the whole counsel of God, if you believe that the Word of God should be proclaimed clearly, and you would like to be a part of this ministry, then pray for me. I need it. Pray for the Word of God. I need that. And also, when you take a break from studying, go to the front page at thebibleversebyverse.com, click the Donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Until next time, so long, everyone.